Hey there, I have a homeschool project to share with you today. We're going to be making an interactive Galileo book for our astronomy unit. So first up, you'll need some spray adhesive. And if you don't have spray adhesive, you can use some glue sticks. And then we'll need a pair of scissors. I prefer using nonstick scissors for this project. With all the adhesive that we're using, it's just easier to use nonstick scissors. And a long reach stapler which is heavy duty, so it can staple through quite a few sheets of paper. You also need some chipboard, which I just use from the back of a drawing paper pad or even a water paper pad. And then you'll need some Lokta paper. This is handmade paper from Nepal. It's very flexible, very strong, comes in beautiful, vibrant colors, and it's perfect for covering books or boxes because it doesn't crack or tear. So this is a really beautiful product. Uh, I also used really large sheets of watercolor paper. I think they're about 90 pound, and I cut them into strips for the interior of the book. So I covered the chipboard with the Lokta paper, cutting about an inch around each piece of chipboard, and then using the spray adhesive to cover the chipboard with the Lokta paper. And then I used some of the, this bright green for the interior pieces of the book. So here's the book kind of half assembled and here are some of the bits that are going to get stapled into the book and it's all blank right now and I think I have four signatures in there with um, that I stapled to the spine and here are some of the cutouts that I made using the silhouette cameo that are going to go into the book and that was easy to make with the silhouette. So here's the, the book that we're going to use. Um, we read the book and then we were inspired to make our own interactive book based on that book that we read. So the first thing that we did was make a birth certificate for Galileo. And there was my eight-year-old who was writing in the birth certificate. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the next interactive page has the Copernican model and then the Ptolemaic model, or I think Ptolemaic first and then Copernican model um, of the solar system. And here's some of the supplies that we were using. Sorry, I went by that pretty quickly. Um, so this is the, I think the Earth-centered uh, model of the solar system and it is movable. And there are my kids working on that project. And then here is the Copernican model with the sun being in the center. So it was all movable, which was really great fun for the kids. So then next up, we have this special kind of telescope. It's not really a telescope, but it was invented by Archimedes to measure the ascension of the, of the sun. And that was another little interactive um, element in the book. And then next up, we did the pendulum. And for this, we, um, we, got, we got the information out of the book, and then we actually recreated the experiment, or rather the demonstration, and we timed it using our cell phone, and we measured each swing, and it was indeed the same. We also went and did the other experiment that Galileo did when he dropped two, um, two uh, cannonballs from the tower, Leaning Tower of Pisa, and they both landed at the same time. And so we have our own interactive element in the book, and we also performed the experiment, and sure enough, they do land at the same time, which was a great thrill for the kids to see. So next up is the geometric compass that Galileo invented, and he had a, a book published all about it, and so we made our own little book, and... Um, and wrote about the geometric uh, geometric compass. And then that is a, an envelope um, that we made using this envelope punch board. And we uh, we have a letter inside, but I didn't open, I didn't crack the, the seal. And it was a letter, I think, to um, Kepler because uh, Galileo and Kepler and some of the other scientists used to converse with one another. So here's um, Tycho Brahe's um, a quadrant that he invented. And next up is uh, Johannes Kepler, and these are some of the letters that, you know, he also corresponded with other scientists of his day. So then we uh, learned once that Galileo made the telescope, he was able to see a whole lot of things in the sky that weren't visible before. And the first thing that he found were the moons of Jupiter, and so that little 
element was interactive. You could move the moons around. Uh, he also um, he also wrote a little pamphlet called The Starry Messenger. And uh, a few years later after that, there was a comet, there are actually three comets that were seen in the sky, I think in 1618 or something. So we did that little interactive element as well. And here, um, Galileo used the telescope to observe the sunspots. So even though we have our sun going around in a circle, it really should be revolving, but we can't really make it revolve in a, in a book. So we just have it going around in a circle, and then Galileo could observe the sunspots on a piece of paper that went um, so that the light went through the telescope and onto a paper rather than in his eyes. So uh, Galileo figured out finally that the pendulum could be used to um, invent a clock, which he did, and that was just as he was dying. And so the last page of that book was um, just a, a graveyard. So the first book was my eight-year-old's book, and the second one that you're looking at is my 13-year-old's book. So even though the interactive elements are all the same, he wrote quite a bit more, uh, you know, a, a narration and an explanation of the um, the pictures a lot more than my eight-year-old did. So my eight-year-old, who just turned nine, is in fourth grade, and my 13-year-old is in eighth grade. So we did the same astronomy unit, uh, it, and we did the same project. It's just that my 13-year-old uh, wrote more. And this is the only difference in his book is when it came to Kepler, he was able to explain the three laws of Kepler, and that was too advanced for my fourth grader. And again, like his mo his moons move, all the, the elements are the same, and they're all interactive, and they, they have a great fun going through and playing around with, um, with this book. And he drew two comets, but we hope to go back and add a third, and same with my other sons. We want to add three comets. And um, there's the clock, and then finally the grave. So I did... Um, sketch this out beforehand and the, these are my just my pencil sketches of what I wanted the book to look like. Okay guys, thanks for watching.